Hi scholars, it's Miss Dunn. Today we're going to read together and we're going to read this book called Sumorella. Before we check in on the front cover, we're going to do three things together. I'm going to share in a good reader question, some important words to help you better understand the story. And last, I'm going to share the genre of this book. So your good reader question is, think of a time when you wanted to win something and how did you feel? Please pause this video if you can and share your idea with someone close to you. Great, thank you. So recently I've been playing a lot of board games. My favorite game to play right now is Ticket to Ride. And when I play this game, I really want to win. And I felt very determined to win, to build the longest train and the best routes. So thinking about your answer to this question, it's going to help you connect with our main character and about what he wants to do. So the next thing we're going to talk about is some important words that's going to help you understand this story better. One important word is sumo. Can you say it with me? Sumo. Sumo is a Japanese sport where two men are competing against each other in a clay ring. The second important word that's helpful for you to know is sumo tori. Can you say that word with me? Sumo tori. Sumo tori is a man who competes in a sumo match. So in other words, a sumo wrestler. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the genre of this book. So the genre of this book is fiction, which means that the story was created by the author's heart and brain. And in a fiction story, you can find characters, setting, a problem and solution, and sometimes some magical elements because we know that in fiction stories, anything can happen because it came from the author's imagination. So now let's check in on the front cover. What do you notice? What questions are coming up for you before we get started to read? Great. So there's some things I already noticed that I already know about the main character in the story. The main character is Mango Boy. I know that the main character, Mango Boy's gender identity is a boy. I know that his age identity is a child in this book. And I know that his language identity is English and Pigeon. And Pigeon is a language with words from lots of different countries. I'm also noticing on the front cover that the title of the book also says a Hawaii Cinderella story. So it's making me wonder about how the story of Cinderella is related to this book, Sumerella. And also because the book says a Hawaii Cinderella story, it's making me believe that the setting in this book is in Hawaii, even though the author's words only say an island. So those are some wonderings that I'm having. Let's get started. Sumerella. This book was written by Sandy Takayama and illustrated by Esther Segeti. Once upon a time, on an island in the middle of the ocean, there lived a young boy with his mother and father and two older brothers. They lived in an old house in the middle of a huge yard surrounded by mango trees. And each morning, the boy's mother and father went off to the little corner market where they sold their mango specialties. People came from all over the island to buy their delicious mango bread, mango chutney, mango seed, and of course, pickled mango. So now we know about this family, this young boy, his two older brothers, and two parents. Each afternoon, his two older brothers went off to sumo practice at the neighborhood park. And each day after school, the young boy was left to do all the chores. He picked the mangoes, he peeled them, sliced them, and chopped them. He trimmed the tree branches, raked up the leaves, and threw away the ugh, rotten mangoes. Everyone called him Mango Boy. So now we know the character's name, Mango Boy. The day came for the local sumo exhibition. Rumor had it that a famous stable master from Japan, a stable master is a retired sumo wrestler who coaches the young sumo wrestlers. Rumor had it that a famous stable master from Japan was visiting the island in hopes of recruiting some local talent. The two older boys, older brothers were competing in the exhibition. But when the young boy begged them to go, begged to go with them, they just laughed. What? Mango boy, you let go with us? No way. You're so shrimpy. The mawashi's not even going to stay on. The mawashi is the belt worn by sumo authorities or sumo wrestlers. You got to gain one, two, three hundred pounds, all right? They all cracked up on the way to the park. Mango boy wished more than anything that he could compete in the exhibition. How oh, can I go? No more time. Always get so much work for do. He sighed as he sat down under a mango tree. Just then, the mango boys 
good friend, the Manapua man, came strolling down the lane calling out, Hot Manapua! Hot Manapua! When he reached the house, he lifted the bamboo pole off his shoulders and looked closely at Mango Boy. Eh, you alright or what, boy? You look kind of funny kind. Mango Boy shook his head. Nah, nothing, just thinking. He looked around and then whispered to the Manapua man. Eh, hey, no tell nobody, but I like being the sumo stuff today. You? You let be one sum sumo tori? The Manapua man asked. I know, I know. I say small, but I pretty fast, you know. I practice my moves morning time for him to get up. I just need one chance to prove myself. The Manapua man shrugged. Sans pupule. That means crazy. To me, but eh. Go then, go. I will do your work for you. What? To the mango boy? Nah, I can't ask for you to do all by yourself. Eh. I say oh to the Manapua man, but I can handle. There's a chance. Better go for it. Mango boy didn't move. But I no more wamamashi. And I don't know how to make my hair nice. The kind of way. No worry, no worry, said the Manapur man with a smile. Just bring me one pumpkin, some mice, and a big rat. Mango boy quickly gathered everything. It sounds like the Manapur man has a plan for how to help Mango boy. The Manapur man took a bite out of one of the Manapurs and waved it in the air. The next instant, Mango boy was standing next to a golden coach complete with a horse and coachman. Oh, it sounds like the Manapur man has magic. The Manapua man, oh, let's reread that again. The mango boy was dressed in a satin ball gown with the daintiest glass slippers on his feet. The Manapua man jumped back in surprise. Wow, sorry boy, I won't make you the wrong kind of things. Oh, let me think. Sumutori, sumutori, oh yeah, yeah. I think you gotta get five bags for it, two pounds of rice, and uh, 12 green bananas. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Mango Boy took a while to get all the things. Finally, he placed everything in front of the Manapua man. The Manapua man looked it all over and said, okay, now I gotta eat them all. What? Yelled the Mango Boy, I gotta eat all that? Yeah, why? Replied the, Ma replied the Manapua man. What do you think? Sumo told you just drink water all day? Mango Boy smiled weakly and started to dig in and eat the food. He managed to eat one and a half bags of poi, three cups of rice, and seven green bananas before collapsing on the ground with a huge burp. Sounds like he tried really hard to eat all the food, but wasn't able to eat all of it. Again, the Manapua man took a bite out of the Manapua and waved it in the air. And suddenly, Mango Boy stood dressed in a mawashi made of the most beautiful silk. His hair gleamed in an elaborate top knot. The Manapua man walked around looking at him. You stay a little bit more tall, but still way too skinny. Eh, no can out though. You never eat all the stuff, that's why. I don't care, Mango Boy said. Good enough, good enough. Thanks, yeah? As Mango Boy turned to run to the expedition, the Manapua man yelled, Oh, yeah, I must not forget. From now on, you Sumorella, not Mango Boy. And no forget come back by cow cow time. It's like dinner time. Or your mosh is gonna fall right off your quale. A quale is your bottom. So it sounds like the author is telling us that the Manapua man helped a mango boy get all of the right clothes and get everything ready so that he could be a sumo tori. But he had to remember to come back by cow cow time or else his mawashi was gonna fall off. Sumorella made it just in time. When he first took his place on the doful, that's the, that's the ring of where the sumo toris or sumo wrestlers wrestle. The crowd roared with laughter, but as the exhibition went on, he continued to beat each of his opponents. The laughter turned into cheers. Sumorella, Sumorella, they chanted. Soon, it was time for the final match. Sumorella's stomach began to growl as he grappled with the opponent. And then he realized with an alarm that it was almost cow, cow time. Oh, I remember from before that he has to remember to return home. 
or else his mawashi is going to fall off. With one last heave, he threw his opponent down out of the doho. Remember, that's the ring. His mawashi fell off, but he kept on running. He escaped through the nearest exit, and when he reached home, he was himself again. Sumerilla glanced around. All the chores were done, and the Manapua man was slipping the bamboo pole back onto his shoulders. Before Sumerilla could say a word, the Manapua man flashed a shaka sign and disappeared down the lane. At dinner that night, his brothers could only exclaim or talk about the skinny Sumotori that had won every match and then vanished mysteriously, leaving nothing behind but his mawashi. Oh, it sounds like the author is telling us that nobody knew that Mango Boy was Sumorella. The stable master was going from house to house looking for the Sumotori who could fit into it. When the stable master arrived, the brothers tried every trick they knew to squeeze into the mawashi. They grunted, they groaned, they pulled, they tugged, but they could barely get a leg in. The stable master was about to leave when he noticed Sumorella sitting in the mango tree. He bowed politely and said, Go men aside. That means excuse me in Japanese. Perhaps you could try on this mawashi too. Ah, uh, no bother with him, laughed his brothers. Unless you like him rest with a mango or something. But the stable master insisted and asked. Sumerella climbed down from the tree. He tried on the mawashi. And to everybody's surprise, it fit perfectly. The stable master immediately invited Sumerella to come live in Japan and train with him at the finest sumo stable there. Sumerella worked hard and eventually reached the rank of Yokozuna. That's the highest rank. He became one of the most famous sumotori in Japan and was well loved by the people everywhere. When he retired from sumo, he returned home and married a former Miss Hawaii. He later became a trustee of one of the wealthiest private states in the islands. And for the rest of his life, he never ever had to pick up a rotten mango again. The end. This is the story of Sumorella. Your Garuda question, scholars, is why do you think Mango Boy didn't tell anyone that he was Sumorella? Why do you think Mango Boy didn't tell anyone that he was Sumorella? And if you can, pause this video to share your idea with someone close to you. Thank you. So my answer to that question is, I think that Mango Boy didn't tell anyone that he was Sumorella when he came home because maybe he was feeling scared that people would laugh at him if they found out that he was a Sumotori. Because I remember in the book, the author was telling us that his two older brothers laughed at him when he was telling them that he wanted to go to the sumo exhibition. So maybe he didn't tell anyone because he was scared. So now scholars, the Garuda skill we're gonna practice is comparing and contrasting text. So, The Garuda skill that we're going to practice today, scholars, is comparing and contrasting texts. So finding two books and finding ways that they're the same and ways that are different. So your task today is to think about another book that you were reminded of when we read Sumerella and find ways of how these two books were the same and different. I wrote down some elements of the book Sumerella to get us thinking about another book that you may want to use to compare and contrast. The elements I included were the characters and the problem and solution. So in Sumerella, one of the characters is Mango Boy. We know that Mango Boy is a boy, he's a child, he's hardworking and helps his family, and he has two brothers that are mean. Another character in Sumerella is the Manapua man. He's in a man, he's an adult, he has magical powers, and he's helpful. There was two problems that I noticed in Sumerella. One problem was that Mango Boy wanted to compete in the sumo exhibition, but he had chores and he didn't have the right clothes to be a sumo toy. That problem was solved when Manapua man use magic to help Mango Boy. The other problem I noticed was that Sumerella left the match in a hurry and no one knew that he was Mango Boy. That problem was solved when Mango Boy tried on the Moashi and everyone learned that he was Sumerella. So you can use any book that you want to compare and contrast with Sumerella and I had some ideas if you want to use this book. But of course, the choice is yours for the book that's just right for you. So I was reminded of Ruby's Wish because in Ruby's Wish, there was an untrue story being told that Ruby couldn't go to school and learn because she was a girl. 
And it sounds like in Sumerella, there was an untrue story being told that you have to be big in order to be a sumo tori. And because Mango Boy was skinnier, that he wasn't able to be a sumo tori. Another book that I was reminded of was Wilma Rudolph, where in Wilma Rudolph, her family collaborated and helped her with her dream of running like a gazelle without a brace. Which, in Sumerella, Mango Boy's friend, the Manipua man, helped Mango Boy with his dream of being able to compete in a sumo exhibition. The last book that I was reminded of was Cinderella, where in, Cin in Cinderella, she had a dream to go to the ball, but she had chores and she had didn't have the right, uh, right outfit and she had two stepsisters that were mean. And in Sumerella, he wanted to go to the Sumer exhibition, but he also didn't have the right clothes and he had chores, and he had two older brothers that were me. So scholars, once you decide what book you want to compare and contrast with Sumerella, we're gonna use this tool, the Venn diagram, to write down all your ideas of how these two books were different and how these books were the same. And please send your Venn diagram to your teachers because we'd love to see your thoughts. Have a great day, scholars. Bye.